Hey guys, JT Shaver here, and today I want to share seven tips to help you take more professional product shots. A lot of people are stuck at home right now, but that kind of makes it a perfect opportunity to practice your product photography because you can basically grab anything that's laying around the house. I know it's kind of hard to stay motivated right now, but one of the best things you can do is continue to develop and expand your skill set. If you can continue building your portfolio, then when you get back to work, your skills will still be sharp and you'll be able to expand your client base and just the type of work that you do in general. If you're an intermediate or advanced photographer, you might think some of these tips are too basic, but if you keep watching, I bet you'll see something that you haven't tried before or that might inspire a new idea. Let's take a look at the first tip. Tip number one is to shoot at a smaller aperture. If you're not familiar, the aperture is the size of the hole in your lens that lets light through to the camera sensor itself. A bigger hole lets in more light, but it also means that more of your image will be out of focus and on the other hand, a smaller aperture lets in less light but it means that more of your image will be in focus. It can also be kind of confusing because a smaller aperture uses a larger number. So for example, f2.8 means a wider aperture than something like f16. Large apertures are really popular in portrait and other photography because it gives you some nice soft blur and a lot of people like that look. When it comes to showing off products, a smaller aperture has a lot of different benefits. The main thing is that it just lets you get more detail in your shots and that's the whole purpose of product photography. To help sell the product, you need to show off all the details so potential customers can see exactly what they're going to get. Of course, you can have some stylized or lifestyle shots, but the main image you usually want to show as much detail as possible. Another thing that I've learned, and it's kind of subconscious, but it's still very important, is that sometimes if you have a shallow depth of field, it can actually make the product look cheap. Now, let me explain why. Being able to shoot at a smaller aperture requires a lot of light and even some specialized gear. So shooting at a small aperture not only shows off more detail, but it subconsciously shows people that you have the gear, the time, and the experience to do things right. Having a shallow depth of field can sometimes imply that you just took the product out and set it down and took a quick picture. That can imply that the product just isn't important enough to take the time to do it right and can make it look a little more cheap. Tip number two is to choose your focal length wisely. Different focal lengths do more than let you just zoom in or out. They can drastically change the look of the product and even the look of the background. If you're using an 18 millimeter lens, for example, you have to physically move really close to the product to get it to fill the frame. On the other hand, if you're using something like a 200 millimeter lens, you can stand back really far from the product and still have it fill the frame. One issue with a really wide lens is that it will cause your product to look too distorted and that's really not something that you want. Longer focal lengths typically have a more natural look and they also give you a better lens compression and I'm not gonna get into the technical aspects of lens compression, but you'll be able to see it in some of the sample photos right now. So here's a product photo taken at 24 millimeters. And to get the shot to fill the frame, I had to move in really close. Here's the same photo taken with a 200 millimeter lens. With this lens, I was able to stand much farther back and you'll notice that the product is the same overall size in the frame, but they look completely different. For comparison, here's the same product taken with a 70 millimeter focal length, which is close to how the human eye normally sees. So somewhere around 16 to 35 millimeter will give you a wider, sometimes even a fisheye look. 50 to 100 millimeter looks pretty natural because that's what the human eye sees. And anything around 150 to 200 millimeters or more will give you a more compressed high-end look. Because of lens compression, a longer focal length will also make your background appear larger in the frame, which is a good thing if you don't have a really big studio space or a big backdrop to work with. That way you don't have just random parts of the room showing up in the sides of your frame. Tip number three is to light the product with as large of a light source as possible. This tip applies mostly to more more traditional product photography on some kind of seamless backdrop, but if you're going for a more stylized look, basically any type of lighting setup will do. A large light source shows as much detail as possible because it gets rid of most of the shadows in the image. It also creates some really nice reflections and helps potential customers see all the details in your products. Tip number four is to fill in the shadows with some kind of reflector. Now like I keep mentioning, in traditional product photos, you really want to get rid of the shadows as much as possible. If you're using something like a big softbox or even just the light coming in from a window, one of the best ways to do that is just stick a reflector on the opposite side that the light is coming from. The reflector can be pretty much anything from a piece of paper to a white foam board or some kind of collapsible pop-up reflector. All you have to do is set it on the opposite side of the light just out of the frame and it will do a really good job of filling in the shadows. One of my go-to items for basic product shots like this is the Studio in a Box by Photo Deox. It's kind of like a super upgraded version of the cheaper light tints 
that you've seen. It's basically a cube with reflective material inside and this version has built-in LED lights and diffusion. It has some backgrounds included and it just makes it really easy to get a seamless backdrop with really nice diffused lighting. Tip number five is to try non-white backgrounds. It's really important to know how to create white seamless backgrounds, especially if you're selling on Amazon or somewhere like that where it's actually a requirement to show just the product on a pure white background. You can also get some really unique looking shots on gray or black or by using a color that complements the color of the brand of the product that you're taking a picture of. A gray, black, or colored background is more useful in stylized shots for marketing materials or that you can post on social media. If you want to get a really dramatic look, try using a black background and avoid using any type of reflector to make the shadows look even deeper. Tip number six is to use a tripod. It may seem super basic and obvious, but it's just too easy to get lazy and just grab your product and stick it down and take a picture and call it good. Even if you think it won't make a difference, just do it because I guarantee there will be a time where you take what you think is the perfect picture, but then you go and look on the computer and it's just ever so slightly blurry. Let's say you want to keep everything sharp so you have a really small aperture but in order to do that you have to decrease your shutter speed or increase your ISO. If you're trying to shoot handheld and you decrease your shutter speed too much you're gonna start to get blur simply from the movement of your hands holding the camera. You can increase the ISO to compensate for that so you can use a higher shutter speed but the higher the ISO that you use the more noise will be in your image. You should always be shooting at ISO 100 or whatever the lowest ISO on your camera is. So if you're shooting at f11 or even f22 you're gonna have to set your shutter speed really slow sometimes even multiple seconds to get a proper exposure. Obviously if you're shutter speed is one or two seconds, it's just impossible to get a sharp image handheld. If you're using studio strobes, this doesn't really apply because you can set your camera settings and then just turn the power up on the strobes to get the right exposure. By using a tripod, you can basically use any type of light and get just as good of images without any kind of studio strobes. As a side note, try using a remote shutter release or the timer function on your camera just to avoid any shake that happens when you physically press the shutter button with your finger. Tip number seven is to capture close-up details. You definitely want wider shots showing off the entire product, but having close-up shots helps customers see exactly what they're gonna get before they can touch it for themselves. By getting close-up shots, you can better show off the build quality and the material of the product, the texture of the product, and any other details that you just can't see in the wider shots. Most modern lenses let you get pretty tight shots, but if you don't wanna pick up a macro lens, one really cheap alternative is to use extension tubes. Extension tubes are basically just hollow tubes that move your lens farther away from the sensor of your camera and that allows you to move the lens closer to the product and focus at a closer distance. There's also things like close-up filters but I think extension tubes are a lot better because they don't add any extra glass between the lens and the sensor. They're also cheaper than those filters and they're way cheaper than macro lenses. If you can afford a macro lens I would highly recommend it but extension tubes are a really cheap alternative and they're usually 20 to 50 bucks for a pretty nice set. I'll have affiliate links to some extension tubes and some of the other gear that I talked about in this video if you want to check that out. It doesn't cost you anything extra, but it does help me create more videos like this. If you found any of these tips useful, make sure you hit subscribe and hit the bell icon so you don't miss any more useful videos. Also, leave a comment below and let me know if you have any product photography tips of your own. That's it for now guys. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.